This all happened in the late 1980s when I was a very young girl, though some of the details may be a little bit hazy, but believe me when I say that these eerie events definitely did take place. My mom had left my dad, whose face I can hardly recall, and since he'd gambled and drank all of our savings away, my mom, kid sister Sophie, and me had to rent a pretty run-down place in Nowheresville, Nebraska. It wasn't exactly a bad neighborhood, just a poor one, since the local mine had recently closed, starving the population of any halfway decent employment. Half the houses were empty, boarded up and pretty darn creepy to a little kid, with their cracked windows and gaps in the porch floorboards. Gaps where I'd imagined hands could reach through and grab me. But my mom told me we were safe there because daddy couldn't find us, and that was good enough for me. But still, I never felt settled in that cold, creaky house. I'd scream myself awake at night, so my mom moved Sophie into my bedroom, hoping the companionship might calm my nerves. And it did, to a degree, although my night terrors were then replaced by a torturous insomnia. I'd lie in bed listening to the soothing sounds of my mom downstairs, washing dishes, then watching Alf on the TV, then heading upstairs to bed, and only after my mom was fast asleep would I hear the jingly, jangly chimes of the ice cream truck. The tune was always the same, the teddy bear's picnic. It would float closer and closer as the truck circled around nearby houses. Then it would stop, dead, while the van always parked right outside, just below my window. My battered KCO told me it was 3 a.m. when I'd separate my curtains, just a touch, and peer down through sheer curiosity. I could see the garish cartoon characters gaudily painted on the truck and the sun-faded pictures of frozen treats. But no matter how hard I strained my eyes, I couldn't see inside. I couldn't see the ice cream man. It was too darn dark in there. He'd wait for maybe six minutes, then head off down the street. Gradually, that gentle music would fade away, and I'd lie in bed, unsure what to make of this odd nocturnal business. When I asked the other kids at school, they knew nothing about it and accused me of lying, then teased me until I cried. My mom assured me that the whole thing was a very vivid dream, but the reason I know that the truck was very real was that on one long, hot September night, I sent Sophie out to buy me an ice cream, and I never saw my little sister or that ice cream truck ever again. <laughs>